Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing awesome. We had an awesome uh, church service today and um, decided to stay home tonight. Allergies are not my friend lately, and I haven't been eating right either, but tomorrow's a new day, and tomorrow starts eating right. So I feel so much better when I eat right than I do when I don't. So I am listening to music tonight. Pretty excited about that too. Um, this My phone, my dead phone resurrected itself. So got music over here. Listening to some Chris Tomlin, Amazing Grace, my chains are gone. But I wanna talk to you tonight about finish the race and finish the race strong. So what race do you think I'm talking about? I'm not talking about people. I'm, I'm not talking about people, okay? I'm talking about the race of our Christianity, the scriptures that go with that. We're gonna look those up tonight. And um, just if you have any comments, put them in. I haven't had a chance to really check comments later. Again, my name is Charm. Tonight I have Faith Over Fear. It's what I wore to church. I'm not going to show you the rest. <laughs> because I may or may not have my jammies on already. I already do. I do have them on. Okay, I'm having a hard time getting comfy. I'll tell you what, my cat. My cat this afternoon. Her name is Gracie. I don't know where she is but she's decided she likes sleeping in my chair again because I moved that blanket out of it she does not like the purple blanket that I put on here she doesn't like it if I have it on me and I'm in my chair in the living room she want nothing to do with me I don't know why she doesn't like it it's really soft I like it but anyway she was in my chair and I had to kick her out she wasn't real happy and I, I went somewhere and I came back and she was back in my chair again. So anyway, some some night she'll be my special guest. But let's get into some prayer. I think my computer is too close. Let me make sure the volume is up on this because sometimes I listen to things and they're really loud so I turn, them, turn it down. Okay. Well, let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Your beautiful creation was shining today. The trees are green. The grass is green. The flowers are blooming, God, and you have blessed us with rain for several days, God, and we just thank you for that. We thank you that you are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter in the storm, God. And we thank you because you are the great Jehovah and you are the great I Am. And you are from everlasting to everlasting. You have always been God and you will always be. You are on your throne and you are in control, God. Your love and compassion does not fail, God. We just thank you because you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. And you are the righteous judge, God. And you will judge unrighteousness. People have time, though, now that they can come to Jesus. And they can get saved through Jesus. God, we also thank you because you're kind and compassionate and loving and forgiving your patient God you are um, we can trust you God you're faithful God thank you for calling us as your children thank you for loving us we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength God we pray for the lost we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to, um, to draw 
them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we just pray for the prodigals to come home. God, we pray for all the disasters I was watching this afternoon. This volcano in, um, I can't remember the name, St. Something, St. Something Island, I forgot. But you know, God, you know the people's hearts, you know what they need, God. Some of them are displaced on the opposite side of the island. Some people have been evacuated. God, just please be with these people and meet their needs. Their animals have a lack of water and a lack of food because they weren't able to evacuate with them. The people that they have evacuated to, they have a lack of food. God, please just meet their needs. Send some people to meet their needs. Some people that can be the hands and feet of Jesus for them. And all the other disasters too, God. There's just so many. There's just so many wars and rumors of wars, God. But we know that you are our protector, God, and that you will protect us. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God, and let them feel your presence. Let them feel your arms around them in their time of sorrow. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, my friends, my pray and share warriors. I don't know if I said that earlier or not. Got up while ago to go get something, go get these. I got in the dining room and I forgot what I went in there for. It's just kind of a, it's just kind of an older thing when you get older. It's just a problem that we have. I'm trying to find the best place to put my music. There we go. That's a good place. So I need room for my Bible and I need room for this piece of paper. Okay, so 2 Timothy. I didn't put these in. Sorry, I did not have a chance to put these in order but let me share first because second timothy will be a good follow-up to what i'm going to read okay so this was my share today on facebook this message in song popped into my head yesterday but i didn't have time to share it i love this song by unspoken it's called good fight we must keep fighting the good fight we must keep standing for truth Yesterday, the words on my mind, finish the race strong. Christians are on a cross-country run with obstacles in the way, but Jesus is leading the way, and the closer we stay to him, the easier it is to hear and see him. It is easier to follow his steps also if we stay close. We can see where he stepped. Jesus is the only path Oh wait. If you are not saved, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So, I've always heard John 3, 16, but I was listening to a man yesterday and he quoted John 3 21 and I go well that's what I have found you know that I have discovered you know John 3 16 through 21 because 20 20 and 21 talk about um, if you're walking in darkness uh, then there is corruption we may read it later okay well let's right now after I read that about the good fight, which the race is the good fight, staying in the race is the good fight. Then 2 Timothy, oh, I love this song that I'm listening to. I have such great memories to go with that song. 
More I Seek You um, by Carrie Jo. She's one of my favorites. Okay. So 2 Timothy 4, 7 says this. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. So he's fought the good fight, and he's finished his course, he's finished his race, and he's kept his faith, faith over fear. And so our reward for doing these things is going to be a crown of righteousness. And God is the righteous judge. Because God, only God knows hearts and minds. We think we know people's hearts and we want to judge people by their actions. But we really do not know their hearts. And you know what? We don't know either. We don't know the hardships that they have gone through during their life. And so that's why we don't judge. God is the judge. He is the righteous judge. He will judge unrighteousness. And he will judge the righteous too. And if we finish our course, if we finish our, our race strong, Staying behind Jesus because we need to stay as close to Jesus as we can. We don't need Jesus to get out of our sight. And how we do that is we read God's Word and we pray and we praise and we have a relationship daily with God. Off and on all day too. Praying and praising and you know just speaking speaking to God and letting Him speak to us. Because when we get still, we can hear Him speak to us. We have to be still. We have to be quiet. And it is a challenge. It is quite a challenge. Okay. So, we did 2 Timothy 4.7. Okay, now let's go to Hebrews. I guess we're going backwards. Well, maybe not. I'm going forward. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. It says this. This is what Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 says. We're foreseeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, uh, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such con contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So again, the race. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So I don't know about you, but things are getting pretty crazy in this world. There are things that I have never experienced or seen before in my whole life. And I'm 61. I'm no spring chicken. So, in my 61 years, I have never seen what we're seeing now. The level of hate against other people. The level of n disrespect for each other and not being able to agree to disagree and just wanting to cancel people because you don't agree with them. That's just, you know, 
that's just very um, juvenile as adults we can agree to disagree I have friends and they don't agree with me on everything but we are friends you know and that disagreement is not going to change my friendship with them it's just not we have to agree to disagree I have to agree to disagree with my husband and so we want to get along we want to we want to run this race with patience and so we look towards Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith you know he endured the cross for us what if Jesus would have decided you know humanity is not worth this that's not worth this sacrifice and sometimes I wonder if humanity was worth the sacrifice but to God and Jesus it was it was worth the sacrifice because um, he endured it though because of the great love that he has for us he has an eternal love for us that never changes it's always the same whether we're being sinful or whether we're being obedient the level of love never changes that Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit have for us. It is always the same. Always. Okay, so let's see what else we can find to read. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's read Galatians 5, 7. I have my old Bible back. I mean, my... That's not... <laughs> that other one I use, I've had since I was eight. So it's pretty old. This one I've had since I've been saved. I bought this when I got saved. So, but it's not so old that the pages are so delicate, like that one that I've had since I was eight. Okay. Okay, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love ye did run well who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you a little leaven leaveneth the whole loaf lump the whole lump <laughs> sorry I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded that he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. So apparently somebody had pulled them away. That happened a lot. Because leaven, when they talk about leaven, they're, I mean, sure they're talking about something that rises the bread but they're also talking about um, contamination in the in the good and it might not be the right I think I'm gonna read I'm gonna read up here too stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. 
For in Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Okay, I'm going to stop there. So it sounds like to me that um, some of them were talking about circumcision, which was a Jewish tradition, and they followed the law. Well, we're in the grace, what is it called? We are under the grace of Jesus. Does that mean that we don't follow the Ten Commandments? Yeah, we follow the Ten Commandments. But we are under the grace of Jesus. We don't have to do the things that the, Israel, the Israelites had to do um, to sanctify themselves from sin. They used to have to do animal sacrifices to sanctify themselves, to get forgiveness as an offering for sin. And we don't have to do that because we have Jesus. Jesus was the last blood sacrifice for human, for humanity, for everyone. Jesus died for everyone, like everyone. So I want to make sure that you know that the race I'm talking about is like the Christianity race. Keep going. Keep walking in faith. Keep walking with Jesus. That's the race I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the other. I don't want to get, um, I don't want my video taken down because apparently you can't say what you want to say anymore. So I just want to make that very clear that the race I'm talking about is the Christianity race, the staying behind Jesus, the staying staying close enough to Jesus so you can hear his instructions of I mean because when you're on a cross-country race you know picture a cross-country race there are a lot of obstacles in our lives as Christians there are a lot of obstacles in our lives as non-Christians there are a lot of obstacles and we need somebody to help us show us those obstacles and show us how to get around them or show us how to go through them you know and that's what Jesus does okay let me see if I can find something else Okay, let's read Philippians 3, 14. And I think this is going to be the last one unless something else. Uh, I think we'll read Hebrews also. 11, wow, 1 through 40 about faith. Hmm, I don't know, we may just read part of it. I think I read that the other night. Okay, so... Philippians 3.14 Keep going the wrong way. Mm, I'm listening to Kim Walker Smith. She's one of my favorites. She's so good. Okay, so I like Philippians um, 4.13, but we are going to 3.14. 314. Okay, three. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, Whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as 
ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able, even to subdue all things unto himself. Mm, that is good. That is so good. So we need to walk with Jesus and we need to walk together too. We need to run this race together. You know, I had forgotten what I shared the other day, but it was about unity. It was about march in unity, march in unison, march in formation. Those were the words that kept coming to my mind. We need to walk together. We need to walk together in unity or run, run together in unity. Because cross country is a long run. It's a long run. And we're going to need Jesus to help us, to help us show us the way. So we press toward the mark. I think that's all that I see. Oh no. Hebrews 11. Let's go back to Hebrews. Seems like we're just going back and forth tonight. Probably because I didn't put them in order. Now I am not going to read all about the faith. We read this in Sunday school last Sunday. I think it was last Sunday. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then um, in Hebrews 11, if you want to read it on your own, it just goes through and talks about all the biblical fathers like Abraham and uh, Noah and um, who else? Moses and Joseph and just all the patriarchs of the Israelites and the things that they did and that they did, you know, they did the things that they did out of faith of God. So it's a, it's a good chapter. I would read it tonight, but I just really don't want to. Um, so if you want to read it on your own, it is great. It will really build your faith. It will show you what God did for these. And uh, it's really good. Okay. But I just wanted to read that about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen because in order to run our Christianity race, in order to finish our race strong, we're going to need faith. We're going to need to walk in faith. We're going to need to walk in the light. We're going to need to stay as close to Jesus as we can so we can hear Him, so we can see Him. And we do that in the Word and in prayer, in that communication every day, and in praise. Like, I'm listening to praise music right now. And I tell you what I have learned about praise music is I can be having the most horrible day. Just, you name it. My car doesn't start, you know, just lots of problems. And I can turn on praise and worship and I can get my focus off of me and back on God in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And it just change, changes my attitude and changes my day because then my focus is not on my problems. It is on giving them the glory, honor, and praise that they deserve. All right. 
So if you're ever anxious, if you're ever scared, if you're ever mad, upset, turn praise and worship on. Get the focus off of you and back on to God. And then whatever the problem is, it's just going to resolve. It's just going to resolve or it's not going to seem as important. Okay, so I had a very short meeting with God this morning because I went to church today and I had a lot to do before I got out the door this morning. So good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus, a new beautiful day after the rain. And I said, thank you, God, for another new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus, a new beautiful day after the rain. Thank you for all of my blessings and the opportunities to go and worship in person with my church family. I am nothing without you, God. And he said, Child, I know you do not feel well today, but push through to get all things done today. I will order your steps so you can complete all that needs to be done. The way you feel is from bad choices. It is. It's like, I didn't, I just, I don't know. I just lost it yesterday and just started eating everything. And um, I did not feel good this morning, but I feel better this afternoon because I made better choices today. Um, please make better food choices going forward. Please listen to what I am saying if you want to feel better and take better care of yourself. Stay in the race, child. It is long and tiring at times. But do not give up and stay close to Jesus. He is leading the way for you. Stay close so you can hear his voice clearly. He will show you the obstacles, but you must stay close to hear. So keep moving forward, child. And I said, I will, God, keep moving forward and staying close to Jesus. I will stay in the fight for truth and stand for truth always. Thank you for meeting me today. Thank you for encouraging me too. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. The reunion is ahead, so be ready, child. Stay on the path with Jesus, child. He is the only one that knows the way back to me. Stay close and keep listening. Your king comes so soon. Keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus. The reunion will be so beautiful seeing all of you again. And I said, Maranatha God, for Jesus to come get us. But you know what? It's not my timing. It is God's perfect timing. And God, when that last person has accepted Jesus, we're out of here. God will send Jesus. To come and get us and we'll be out of here all right well i have good news i cleaned my desk off yesterday because i had to do some work here and i cannot stand a messy desk when i have to work because i have to make piles and so i work my piles and so when i get through with all my piles they're all stacked up together neatly and um, I didn't have any room to put any piles, so I had to clean my desk off. But the good news is I found this, and I'm so excited. I love finding things. That's one of my favorite things in life is finding things that are lost. Okay, so this is the good news track. So this is what I'm going to use to share the gospel with tonight. Because if this is your first time, this is what I like to do. I like to pray and share and learn. Learn in the scripture. Because when I'm sharing, I'm learning. And sometimes um, when I share something, I go, I don't remember reading that before. So anyway, oh, here comes my son with the remote. So this, this is one of my main jobs is getting shows on for my child so I'll be right back I'm gonna go ahead and do this now so 
because uh, I'm not going to be on here for much longer. Okay, come on. Let's go. Let's go. you got to get up. I can't move. Am I supposed to hurdle over you? Come on. Let's go. Okay, sorry about that. I just didn't want, just ran over my cord. Ugh, okay, I'm having a hard time getting in my little spot today. Okay, so let's do this. Steps to peace with God. This is so good. I really like this. And this is um, good news tracks. The same as this, except this is older. I have one somewhere that um, is a Billy Graham one, but I don't know where it is. I may look at my ministry stuff. I might find some more of these. Okay, so step one, God's purpose, peace, and eternal life. Oh. My music stopped. There we go. Oh, I love this song. I'm drinking water out of my coffee cup tonight. Oh, I love this song. Wish I could turn it up a little bit. As loud as it will go. I'm listening to Take Me Into the Holy of Holies by Cutlass. I love this song. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to refocus. Uh, step one, God's purpose, peace, and eternal life. God loves you, and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive eternal life. Since God planned for us to be at peace with him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? A good question. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3 16. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6 23. So step two is our problem, sin and separation. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey him. Instead, he gave us a will and freedom of choice. But like Adam, we often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. So um, this side of our nature is called sin and it separates us from God. So our sin separates us from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23 So after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.23 but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59, 2. So sin separates us from God. We cannot have a relationship with God if we have sin because he's a holy God. So step three, God's remedy, the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. 
He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins, completely bridge, bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way and we must make the choice. I don't like that picture. The Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4, 12, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5, verily, very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word, Jesus and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life john 5 24 so that was jesus saying that okay step four is our response our response receive christ we can receive jesus christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us jesus said do not let your hearts be troubled you believe in god believe also in me john 14 1. the bible says all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him jesus christ receives forgiveness of sins through his name acts 10:43. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. Okay, so I love this little diagram. I think this is my favorite thing about this, is this little diagram that shows us, and it shows God, it shows people, and it shows God, and it shows Jesus in the center because Jesus is the only path to heaven to God Jesus is the only path to God he bridges he bridges the gap okay so it says people under people it says anxiety sin separation eternal torment and it says are you here and then on the other side it says God peace forgiveness relationship eternal life or here so we are one of two places we're either not saved or we're saved there's there's no in between you're either saved and separated from God I mean you're either not saved and separated from God by your sin or you are saved through Jesus and you are you have peace with God okay so this is the last part how to receive christ i love the little cartoons on this this could be my favorite one okay how to receive christ number one admit you need admit your need i'm a sinner Number two, be willing to turn from your sins, which is repent. It means turn away. It means to ask for forgiveness, but to turn away, not to go back. Uh, number three, believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. Number four, through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as your Savior. So this is what we pray this is a very short prayer um dear lord jesus i know that i am sinful and i need your forgiveness i believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin i want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead.
I invite you to come into my heart and life in Jesus name I pray Amen so the next part <laughs> the next part says God's assurance his word if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus to come into your life, do you know what He has given you? Your new life. When you receive Christ, you are born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, who indwells every believer. This is called regeneration, or new birth. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10:13. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8:39. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 12 through 13. All right, so if you said that prayer, if you accepted Jesus, into your life then um, welcome to the kingdom family of God you are now uh, saved sealed and sanctified through God through Jesus his son and the angels in heaven are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life so we talked about our race and our Christianity journey tonight so if you in order to learn more, we must read God's Word. And start in Matthew. Don't start in Genesis. Because you're going to get about to Leviticus and you're going to stop. So start in Matthew. Learn about Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We'll tell you all about Jesus. We'll tell you about Jesus' ministry while He was here. We'll tell you about uh, Jesus' sacrifice will uh, show you so much about Jesus and pray pray to God every day and then find some praise music and praise because praise is important praise and worship is very important to God alright well I think I did everything I was supposed to do while I was here we talked about finishing the race which is our race of Christianity it has nothing to do about people it's talking about our Christianity journey and how we finish it and we finish it strong um, I mean it has to do with people and it has to do with Christians but it doesn't have to do with people's race is. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the race. The uh, cross-country race that we are on that has obstacles in the way. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I just wanted that to be really clear to um, the people that check my videos and make sure that they're okay. Alright. <clears throat> So, um, in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Wow, there is such a lack of peace right now. I watched so many things. This afternoon, a shooting in Austin, another one in Kenosha, uh, just an, one in Chicago the other day. Well, actually, no. That one was actually in March, but they're just now getting it out there. So that's, that's not weird at all that they didn't talk about it in March. 
Um, I don't know. We need to use our discernment from the Holy Spirit to keep ourselves safe these days. We need to uh, be watching out for maybe not so much in our area as in other areas. We just need to be aware of our surroundings at all times. And so we need peace in this country and we do not have peace. And I know who's to blame for the lack of peace. And it is the opposite of the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus. But I've never seen anything like it. My prayer is that people get saved, that things turn around. But I know by reading this, I've read this cover to cover twice, started a third time. I might finish it. <laughs> I might finish it. I know where I was when I stopped. Um, this has all the answers. Read Matthew 24 and tell me what is not happening right now because every bit of it is happening right now. So we are getting close. We are getting very close to the end, so do not be left behind, please. Do not be left behind. If you did not get saved tonight, please consider getting saved. Please ask God to show you that He's real. If you don't believe, read His Word. Do not be left behind. We think it's bad now, but it is going to be so much worse because when the church leaves and the restrainer of evil leaves there's not going to be anything to restrain the evil it's just going to be wild and rampant like probably some of the movies that you've seen that I've seen alright well I'm going to pray and I'm going to get off of here I don't even know why I got on that subject but maybe somebody needed to know Maybe somebody needs to know, please quit waiting. Quit waiting to get saved. Get saved now. Quit waiting. Run my video back. Say that prayer. Get your steps to peace with God. Because this is what matters. This is most important. God keeps telling me every day, most important thing to Him, not how much our gas costs, not the things that are going on in the world, Wow, I can't believe the song that's playing is just not where we belong by building 429. Not where I belong. So this is not where we belong. This world is fleeting. It is not going to last forever. Please get saved. Please get saved through Jesus. Please do not be left behind. Find your peace with God now while you can. You're gonna be you're gonna have to make a choice later if you are left behind. And it's not gonna be pleasant. If you choose Jesus, it's not gonna be pleasant. It may not be pleasant for us. We may go through some things as Christians, but that's okay. It's okay because I know that the reward far outweighs anything here. Any any material thing, any amount of money. My reward in heaven far outweighs anything I have here. Anything. Um, take this world and give me Jesus. Actually, that's the t-shirt I had on last night. Take this world and give me Jesus. Jesus is forever. This world is not. So if you're clinging onto this world, let go of it. Step away from it. Step away from the things of the world and step into the things of eternity. And that is with God. That is with God, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Well, I'm going to pray now. Uh, I don't, my bangs look, I just got my hair cut, uh, like professionally. And I think, I think I helped with the bangs a little bit, but I think I need to help some more. All right. Let's pray. My friend Josie was on here. 
but I guess she got tired of me rambling and she left. So I'm going to pray for her and her family. And there are a lot of families that are hurting through these shootings. Um, there's a lot, which makes me very skeptical. But I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. But I would tell you privately if you like, if you contacted me. Um, there's power in the name of Jesus. We're fixing to pray to Jesus. And there is power. His name is powerful. God, we just come to you. And we do pray in the name of Jesus. The most powerful name. The name that breaks all chains of addictions. That breaks all chains. That sets the captive free. That name. The name above all names, God. Your precious son that you gave to us, God because out of tremendous love he laid down his life for us because of his sacrifice we have the offer of eternal life God with you this is not where we belong we do not belong in this world we belong with you and we belong with Jesus and we belong with the Holy Spirit and all the saints, all the people that we know, all the family members, all the friends that are there, God, before us. <clears throat> Church family. Church family that's there, God. We know that that is our hope and that is why we want to finish our race strong. And that's why we want to stay in this race. That's why we want to stand for the truth, for only truth. And ask the Holy Spirit to help us discern the truth from the lies. God, we just pray for all truth. We pray to walk in the truth. We pray to look for the glorious appearing of Jesus. To be ready, to be ready when we are called home, to be ready at all times. But God, we know, we see, we see the hurt, we see the pain around us. We see the people that are trying to live their lives, they're trying to run this race by themselves, God. And they are failing so badly. We know that Jesus, we know they need Jesus. We know they need salvation, God. And that is why we want to share your truth and we want to share the gospel of Jesus. Because we don't know hearts and minds. We are not the righteous judge as you are. And so God, just help us to walk in boldness, sharing your truth in sharing the gospel of Jesus unashamedly realizing that if if people do not accept that it is not a rejection of us it is that they are rejecting your son and they are rejecting what he did for them because Jesus died for all he died for every one of us God and we know that and we thank you God just want to lift up Josie and her family to you God I pray that you would keep her safe as she goes to work I pray that you would give her strength God to do her job that you would be with Austin that you would be with her sisters that you would be with her brothers and their families God and that you would be with Mr. Mike and his family that you would be with Hugo and his family God these are the people that um, are close in Josie's circle, God, and we also pray for her uh, co-workers. We pray for them too. We pray for Maria as she recovers, God. We just pray, God, that um, that you would give them protection and provision and blessing, God. God, we pray for the same for our family. 
We pray for safety for Ricky as he comes home tonight from church. We just pray, God, for We pray to see the power of Jesus move in our country, God, and all over the world. We pray for a Jesus movement that no one can stop. No one can stop it, God. They won't even know what hit them. We just pray, God. We pray for this. We pray for our country. We pray for our country to be one nation under God again. To be united again, God, we are so divided right now in so many areas. Some areas don't even matter. Some areas we did not even choose. You chose for us, God. Because you knew us, God. You knew us before we were in our mother's wounds. And you know us so intimately, God. And we just thank you. And we just praise you. And we just want to give you all the glory and honor and praise that you deserve. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright. Oh. I think I'm spiritually drained after that. Because I feel like a lot of what I said did not come from me. I think the Holy Spirit was... Uh guiding me in what to say so I just I'm tired now I gotta get off of here I had some coffee though earlier this afternoon and that might be probably kick in about two and then I'll be up all night but it's okay all right have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow tomorrow's Monday Oh, Monday again. These weeks are going by fast. My birthday month's going to be over soon. I have lots of friends, too, that share this birthday month. Okay, well, much love. Much love. Much love. I guess, uh, much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Uh, good night.